People have been classifying plants, animals, forever. It's a natural human thing. You need to be able to communicate to the people living around you what's poisonous, what's good to eat, what might be a good medicine. To communicate, you need a name for something. And without that, it's meaningless. There are hundreds of thousands, millions of different species. How do you pull all of that information together? So the process of taxonomy is really right at the, at the very centre of the whole scientific endeavour. So what wouldn't we have without taxonomy? We'd have chaos. Taxonomy is basically the study of all living organisms. It's the, the basic science that gives us the underpinning knowledge of what they are, how they relate to one another, and how we can uh, use them. Taxonomy is big science. If we don't have uh, a working classification of life on Earth, it would undermine agriculture, it would undermine medicine, so many fields that rely on being able to accurately communicate. So, in the mid-18th century, we saw this amazing revolution led by Linnaeus who decided to try and classify all the plants and animals. He thought maybe there might be 10,000 plants in total. And then people started describing more and further species. As people explored more of the world, more things came to light. 400,000 plants, millions of insects, untold numbers in other groups. It's the product of hundreds of years of work by thousands of people but all scattered over an immense landscape of hard copy published work in books, in journals, the kind of places where most ordinary people don't have access to. Plant specimens are collected, stored and examined here in the herbarium. Taxonomists then extract and synthesise data from these specimens, like this Brazilian pipewort. A comprehensive study of a plant group or the plants of a region is then drafted. Then, once the study has been peer-reviewed by an academic in a related field, it will be published and archived. Here, and this is traditionally where this information remains, you'd have to visit this library to access all the information in these books. Taxonomy has become kind of unwieldy and the way we communicate our knowledge has to change so that people can get their hands on it. Leaving all this information locked up in journals in a library is not good enough. Science moves faster and faster and we need to keep up with that. Here at Kew, in collaboration with our partners at the University of Oxford and the Natural History Museum in London, We've attempted to build a species resource of unprecedented scale that focuses just on one major group of plants, the monocots. Monocots make up about a fifth of the flowering plants and they include some very important groups including the grasses. Onions and yams as well as of course the cereals and palms. Wheat, rice, corn. There are about 70,000 species of monocots. We have a web page available for each one of those. So this is the first time that information on such a big group of plants has been available in one place. So in a sense, one of the things we're actually doing is almost breaking down the walls of these institutions. We're unlocking not only the content of the institutions, our libraries, our collections, but even opening up scientists' brains. If you'd wanted to know the answer to a question, in the past you've had to trawl through herbarium specimens, books, it would have taken months. Now you can do it in a few seconds on eMonocot. I just received this plant for my birthday. What's its name? How many endangered orchids are there in Africa? Where does the coconut come from? What is the pattern of monocot evolution? How many tuberous species are there in the Arum family? The number of people directly involved in eMonocot is something like 25, but we've actually tapped into the work of thousands of people.
Well, my name's Greg and I live in Adelaide, South Australia. Uh, as an amateur, I don't have access to the academic papers. The trade-off for me is that I get access to the information, but also I'm actually being a contributor to what they do. I built uh, an application named uh, Palm World. All this application has been built thanks to the data coming from uh, Himonokot. My main goal was not to, to, to do a business, you know, it's, uh, it's really to, to share the information and to bring the information in a modern uh, way. I'm a biogeographer and I'm investigating land diversity. Without the monocot, I would not have been able to include monocot alone plants into my analysis. Bye, have a nice day, yeah? Emonocot is part of a, a slow burn taxonomic revolution. It's a milestone on a journey. It, it's a way of taxonomy reinventing itself, I guess, like all subjects have to reinvent themselves. So I think the long term vision for this project is really bringing all the data together about all plants, all fungi, all animals into a single integrated database. People think we know everything there is to know about the living world, but there's so much left to do. By putting information about biodiversity in a public area, we empower everyone to embrace that.